Hi, and welcome back uh, to my channel. So a couple of episodes uh, ago, in fact, uh, let me show you. Yes, it was uh, episode number 48. I did an unboxing of a package I received uh, with uh, several uh, ham radio items. And one of these items was this uh, diplexer. So diplexers are, uh, let me show you again uh, in the browser. If you go to the Wikipedia page, Wikipedia page you can find a, you know, a detailed uh, discussion of what a diplexer is. Uh, but uh, let me try to explain it in my own words. So basically, a diplexer is um, a passive uh, unit, so it doesn't require any power, as you can see, with three ports. One port is called low or L, one port is called high or H, and one port is uh, the signal port or S. The idea is that these two ports are disconnected and uh, between uh, low and S uh, there is a low pass filter and between S and H there is a high pass filter. Okay? So generally the idea is that if we have a scene, if we think about a signal coming in this direction, so from the top to the bottom, if it has a high frequency it will uh, take this path uh, because here there is a high pass filter. Uh, if it is said that it's a low frequency, it will take this uh, path, okay? And this allows, uh, basically, uh, to share one common signal line uh, to do two different things, one on a high frequency and another thing on a low frequency. And, for example, one application of this is in um, uh, satellite communication, ham radio satellite communications. And the satellites typically have an uplink, so something where you send uh, information to the satellite and so for example that uplink could be on a high frequency and they have a downlink so a frequency where they transmit the uh, data to earth and that uh, could be a low uh, frequency and so having a tool like this you can have an antenna here and have your transmitter sending the, the frequencies uh, uh, here and uh, a receiver connected here receiving the low frequencies and the two uh, do not uh, disturb uh, too much uh, each other because uh, these ports are well isolated. Uh, in fact, uh, um, if we go back uh, to the Wikipedia page, uh, here we read that uh, uh, diplexers that are strongly isolated, so they are really uh, designed for this uh, simultaneous reception and transmission, as in the example of satellite communication that I just uh, discussed, they are called uh, duplexers. Okay, and uh, indeed uh, this is uh, a duplexer. I don't know if you can read, but uh, here it says duplexer because it has a 60 dB um, attenuation between these two ports. So the low port, in theory, accepts frequencies from 1.3 to 170 megahertz, and the high port uh, is a high um, for the high frequencies accept frequencies from 350 to uh, 540 megahertz. So UHF here and VHF uh, plus HF here. Um, okay, so this is the theory, and in this video I want, uh, of course, to test uh, this device to, to see if it works. And I think it's going to be an interesting example of how to use a spectrum analyzer to do that. So this specific uh, unit, uh, by the way, it's, uh, it's pretty nice, it's solid, it has N connectors, which is good for high frequencies and it's rated uh, up to 300 watts. So it's, it's very nice to have something like this. I'm very happy I found it in the, in the packet. But I don't have uh, many, an, uh, I mean, uh, any uh, an, uh, type cable, so I'm going to plug some uh, SMA adapters. So let me do that. I'm going first uh, to put the one adapter on the S port and one on the um, low port. And I want basically to check the behavior of this low pass filter, uh, so between S and L, using the tracking generator of my spectrum analyzer. So to do that, I'm going to connect uh, uh, the tracking generator uh, port, uh, uh, sorry, um, output uh, to the signal port. So the tracking generator is going to transmit frequencies uh, to the signal port. And then I'm going to read what comes out uh, uh, on the spectrum analyzer. Okay, so let's uh, configure the tracking generator uh, to uh, emit a frequency as you can see. Oh yes, let me activate uh, the display for the spectrum analyzer. 
uh, with a frequency of uh, minus 10 dBm, and let's see what happens. So I'm going to run it, and uh, this is uh, the result. So let's have a look. So um, let me put a line here. This line represents the strength of the signal transmitted by uh, minus 10 dBm, okay? The, the strength of the signal emitted by the tracking generator. So what comes out from there is this line. And so as you can see, at the frequencies that are from 1 MHz up to basically 200 MHz, the signal is uh, passing without problems. Uh, and then uh, the low pass filter uh, takes place uh, and we have a super strong attenuation here. So by the time that we reach uh, the UHF frequencies, we are more than 50 dB down. And then uh, the low pass filter uh, still uh, attenuates frequencies, but uh, uh, it becomes less efficient at high frequencies. But anyway, this unit here is uh, designed to work uh, with for um, basically high frequencies are considered to be up to 540 megahertz. So really, uh, let me uh, stop at 600 megahertz here. And as you can see, we have a pretty nice uh, low pass filter. Okay, so let's uh, have a look at uh, what happens on the other port, so the H port. Okay, now, now that I've removed this cable, of course, I get nothing inside of the spectrum analyzer. And let me have a look at the H port. Okay, so as you can see here, we have a clear picture of a, a high pass filter. The high pass uh, start working around, I would say, 320 megahertz. Here it says 350. Yeah, probably there. Yes. And then uh, before we have this very strong attenuation as expected. So yeah, the two filters are working uh, very well. Right. So the unit works as expected. I just want to check that indeed uh, there is an isolation between these two ports. And again, uh, this unit uh, specifies here that the isolation is uh, 60 dB. So in order to do that, uh, I'm going uh, uh, to do the following. So let me um, stop for a second the tracking generator um, to discuss uh, what I'm going to do. I'm going to connect uh, uh, the tracking generator to uh, the low port uh, of this uh, duplexer. Okay, so let me do that. Okay. Right, so let me check that all connections are properly made. Okay. So I'm now going to reduce the frequencies here on the spectrum analyzer, so frequency. I'm going to make a stop frequency at, uh, here it says that L stops at 170. So. 170 megahertz okay so now when i will activate um, the tracking generator the a signal from uh, 1 to uh, 170 megahertz will come out of the tracking generator we go inside uh, uh, the low port i'm going to plug here a dummy load uh, to simulate a properly tuned antenna okay and i want to check uh, what of these uh, low frequencies will be received in this high port, okay? So, uh, which is going inside uh, the spectrum analyzer. So, uh, let me configure then the tracking generator and let's increase a little bit the power uh, that I want. So, I'm going to emit now 0 dBm uh, so that, uh, let me go uh, to the display line again. Really, I'm emitting a signal that is uh, here okay um, yeah let me start uh, at one megahertz okay because it was the tracking generator was complaining okay so i'm now starting at uh, one megahertz and stopping at 170 as you can see here and um, again uh, uh, display the, the signal being emitted is at the top line okay zero dbm so having a 60 db attenuation means that uh, i don't want to see anything uh, above this line, which means uh, minus 60 dB. And indeed, uh, this is the case. So if I stop the, the tracking generator, uh, okay, stop. This is the situation when I have no signal, okay? 
if I activate the signal, so I'm emitting uh, low frequencies at 0 dBm, so up there, Uh, we see that we receive some of these low frequencies in the H port, but they are six, more than 60 dB down. So uh, the isolation works uh, properly. So let me see also what happens without a properly tuned antenna. So I'm just going to disconnect uh, uh, the dummy load here. And still uh, it works uh, as expected. So we are below this uh, 60 dB line, which is great. So let me reconnect the dummy load. Okay, and let me stop the tracking generator. Now I want to do the same. So I want to see, so now we basically check the isolation in this direction from low to high. And I want to check the isolation from high to low. So let me um, basically switch uh, these connections. Okay, so connecting this here okay sorry it's taking a little bit of time but okay so now the tracking generator is going uh, to transmit inside the uh, H port and we are going to configure the frequency to start from 350 megahertz uh, to 400, uh, so uh, stop frequency 540 megahertz. Okay, so we have uh, now, we are now sweeping from 350 to 540. So let me activate the tracking generator again at 0 dBm. So again, I don't want to see anything above uh, uh, the minus 60 dB line. Ha, huh, okay. So here, the isolation in this other direction is not up uh, to specifications. So as you can see, we are below 60, only up to 420 megahertz. But when we reach uh, HF, so which is 440, the isolation is only of minus uh, 56 dB, which is still, of course, uh, good enough, uh, but uh, yeah, is not as good as uh, st what stated here. Okay, uh, but still, no big deal, but it's interesting that we discover that uh, the specification of 60 dB is only met in one direction. Okay, uh, so I think I will add a sticker here or something just to remind uh, myself of this. And um, yeah, that's uh, that's all for uh, for this uh, duplexer. So if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to write in the comment section below. And uh, I hope uh, you enjoyed this video. And um, I'll see you next time. Bye bye.